Hello. Um, in the last few days, I've spoken to quite a few of my friends uh, and clients, and you can feel that the level of fear is really rising at the moment. Um, I'm in England, and we are, I think, one, two weeks behind in some other countries in terms of the measures that is being implemented. And, you know, it's really starting to hit more and more now here as well. And uh, so people around me, you know, the fear is really increasing. And I am completely not in a state of fear. I'm really super connected. I feel really good. So what I want to do in this little video is hopefully, um, hopefully be able to lift you a bit into this space. And so the first thing that I want to say is, um, you know, the fear is real. Uh, I don't want to just push it under the carpet and just pretend that nothing is happening because a lot is happening. So, but rather than, you know, going, oh, everything is love, it will be fine. It's good to acknowledge the fear. The first step is to acknowledge the fear, that the fear is real. And when you look at fear, then what is fear? Fear is always comes from mind and mind is always trying to protect us, always wants us to be safe, uh, always want, tries to look out for potential problems and then what can I do to stop us from experiencing pain, pain pleasure principle. So it's always looking into the future, the mind is always looking at the future and looking at potential problems. And most of the time we go through life and we sort of go, we look at what's been happening in the past and then the mind is trying to extrapolate that into the future and then try to plan ahead like, oh, maybe this will happen. And if maybe there's a problem there and what can I do and starts worrying and coming up with solutions, this is what the mind does. So mind is always worrying, is always thinking about problems. Um, now something really big is happening, that line, how we used to live our life, we cannot nicely go this, it's a completely, now what? Because what is happening is so big, it's really unprecedented is what is happening in the world, because our generation, we haven't experienced war, um, where everything stops. So all suddenly our mind cannot look into the future to what is happening and what should I be doing, and, and it causes fear. So it's First of all, that is completely logical. It's totally natural that we feel that fear. And so what do we do with this? And it's, for me, the answer is, you know, surrender and trust. What is happening now is so big that it, it mostly for, except for very few people, just for the normal people, there's not much we can do about it. We, we cannot affect it directly. We cannot make this virus go away. We cannot, uh, you know, the government's putting restrictions on travel, on life, on everything. And there's nothing we can do about it. So, and again, the mind is trying to grasp onto things. Uh, it wants to know why is this happening and, and are these the dark forces or is it the the divine plan etc you know it wants to hold on to something so to create some kind of safety because if i just know why this is happening and what will happen and what will happen tomorrow and next week you know the mind is trying to hold on to grasp just let go we don't know what's going to happen we can sort of look ahead a bit what happened in china what's happening in italy italy is ahead of england and other countries um, so we get a little bit of an idea of what might happen but nobody really knows what's the impact here for the economy. It's going to be huge, but it's not clear yet exactly how. Um, you know, so just try to stay in the present moment and just, hey, all I can do is to look at what is. And what is, is we do have still a house, we do have food in the shops. We are okay. Healthcare is functioning. 
and we are lucky that we live in a part of the world where we have a good healthcare system. Um, we are lucky where there is food in the shops. We actually do have everything that we need. So really we can be blessed that we live in this kind of country and go through this in, under these conditions. Um, and yeah, there is fear of, you know, then people, have, there's a lot of fear about, you know, loss of income and what will happen. And I use an analogy where if you loan 10,000 pounds from the bank, if you can't pay it back, then you've got a big problem. But if you loan 100 million from a bank and now you can't pay it back, then the bank has a problem. And that's a bit what's happening here, where everybody is in the same position. So... They cannot put everybody out of their houses and, and chuck everybody on the street. It's not going to happen. And you can see the response of the government. I think governments have been responding quite well in terms of recognizing this and saying, OK, people need to get mortgage break and we're going to protect people with, with tenants that they won't get evicted and all this. You know, nobody wants a whole society to collapse. So people are doing what they can to keep things as good as possible through this. Um, and you can see the spirit of the people singing from the balconies and applauding, giving support to the workers in, in healthcare and shops and transport, keeping the country going, giving us the, the basic necessities that we need. So finally that recognition is there. So there are positive things that are happening. And you know, for such a long time, We've been saying that, you know, something needs to change, that the way this world is going more and more and more, faster and faster, more this, more that, more travel, more holidays, more cars, more houses, more everything. It just can't keep going like this. And now there's a crisis and everything crashes and we are forced to stop. So... What I love is that in the, the Chinese word for crisis, it's interesting, it's a Chinese word. Um, it's got two uh, symbols. One is danger, one is opportunity. So yes, there is danger, but there's also a real opportunity. And in general, in life, the people that do well in life are always, whatever happens, whatever situation presents itself, what is the opportunity in this and what how can i use this ultimately we are all here on a journey of awakening self-realization so how can we use what is happening now to further that progress to make progress maybe it's really not so bad that we are forced to stop all the running around and all the madness and maybe two three months everything grinds to a halt What's the opportunity of this? We are going to be forced not to get all this external input and uh, amusement. And we're going to go inwards. Just being with ourselves, being with our family. Um, maybe we are forced to learn how can we be happy with all this happening. Because this is what the masters do. The masters take everything and look at how can I use this to further my spiritual practice? How can I practice compassion? How can I help other people? How can I serve? How can I use this time that I've maybe been given to further my practice? How can I really connect? How can I go into stillness? Can I work through the fear? And can I choose to Trust in life, trust in the divine intelligence that is happening in whatever way, how this plays out, knowing that nothing happens for without a reason. Um, it's interesting that at the beginning of December, I got an, an email from somebody that I've worked with in the past. Um, he who was showing us that the, the next big uh, crisis would come and it would be much bigger than the banking crisis of 2007-2008. At the time there wasn't even coronavirus. But he uses a model based on planetary systems. Um, so in the planets this was already clear that this is going to happen. So I'm completely 
in that space where I know it's super uncomfortable and I know some and I really feel you know people are suffering people if that are fragile that are vulnerable for them yeah there's a real fear that you know wow what if I get this I could die you know and that suffering is real so I do feel a lot of compassion and for me myself you know if I get this disease if I die then it's meant to be because I do believe that when our time is up we go not before so um, so I don't give that much energy so I'm really choosing to look at what opportunities does this bring me what can what good can come out of this for me and for the people around me and um, yeah you know and there are little moments when I also get a shock about something almost yesterday when uh, they announced that uh, the schools will close and we, we won't have GCSEs my daughter is taking her exams this year and she was really impacted by this and then well I can feel that energy and I'm but I can very quickly process it and go like well you know in the grand scheme of things this is not such a big problem um, and um, the human race is incredibly uh, what's the word uh, resourceful you know we overcome things we've had world wars we've had all kinds of crises in the past and we always overcome this and the human spirit is so strong this is such uh, an opportunity to wake up and reflect on what is happening in life and what is really valuable this is why I love how they are applauding for the people, the care workers, the people working in the hospitals. And finally, we are recognizing that those are the people that really matter. They, those are the basic things, not the trader on the stock market that has zero impact in, in society. But these people the, that are really look after people are now starting to get a recognition that they deserve. So maybe this is the start of something really positive. And maybe after a three months shutdown, maybe we will reset and rethink, are we actually going to pick up everything how we were doing before, or are we going to make positive changes? So you see nature already restoring itself. The waters in Venice are clean. Dolphins are getting to the shore again. Um, really beautiful things are happening too. And life is happening. So try to connect, try to remember that you are more than this body, you are not your emotions, you are not your thoughts, you are spirit inhabiting this body and your spirit is untouchable, it's eternal, it cannot die, no matter what happens your spirit will not die. It's your soul that gives life to this body, but nobody can touch that soul. It's indestructible. It always has been and it always will be. And that's who you really are. That's who you really are. So use this moment, use everything that is happening to really feel this. And we are living in an extraordinary time. And we all chose to be here on this planet at this time. And often big shifts in consciousness mean big shifts in, in the outside world. So really it's such an amazing time that we live in. So try to look for the beauty in all of this. And you can feel, hopefully you can feel it when you look at this perspective. You can feel the energy rise within you frequency is going up you're shifting out of the fear and you're connecting to love and really connect with people in whatever way whether that's in video or phone calls video messengers and really support each other in this time and then it can be beautiful so I wish you all the best take care and let me know this is helpful. Lots of love.